this because one of the things that you notice that over the years, the systems of education keep changing. And you know, many times you cannot even get a clear cut reason apparently for why the changes are occurring. I remember when I was young, there were systems that had existed before where the, the, the education system was such that uh, there would be an exam, I think, at uh, standard three or grade three then, called intermediary, then there would be other exams going forward. I went through a system where we had seven, seven years of primary, four of secondary, two of A level, and three at, a, at the university. Afterwards, there is the one that they call the 844 system, which is now being scrapped for the new CBC. But Madam Speaker, you notice, every time we have these kind of changes, there's investments that are made that sometimes go to waste. If you go to our rural areas, most of our primary schools have got a classroom that existed that was called a workshop that was earlier used for, for pre-technical subjects, art and music and art and crafts, and now they are, they, are, they, are, they are defunct, they are not being used. So a new system comes in and we are supposed to now look for laboratories, look for extra cl classes. So Madam Speaker, I think we need to be very, very careful to ensure that whatever system we come up with, we can live with it for a long, long time. If you go to the developed world, they don't keep changing the education system every five or ten years or after every major election. We must come up with a policy in education that will last for, for time immemorial so that if we are going to introduce any changes, they are minor, not major changes that will leave some of our, fun our facilities um, we know, without being used. Madam Speaker, uh, now the new system has reintroduced subjects like uh, art, music, pre-technical, and these subjects require new facilities. The facilities that were not used for many years had already become, uh, you know, voided. And some of them had even been brought down. So, Madam Speaker, it's important that the government does a good job. I want to support the idea of the new education system. I think it's a brilliant idea. The CBC education system is very clear and it's, it's actually emulating some of the developed countries. But, Madam Speaker, as we emulate that, we must ensure that we do proper planning. And plan planning for education means that we deal with the issue of curriculum, the issue of uh, staffing, and the issue of funding. Madam Speaker, that is where I feel that as a government, as a country, we have failed. Now, CBC started in uh, 2015 with the pre PP1. Eight years later, we have never put in place plans for ensuring that we have enough classes, we have enough labs, we have not ensured that the teachers that are going to teach this system have been trained because even now what we are churning out of our education, our, our teacher training institutions is still the training that is for, for 844. So it's really, really unfortunate. And Madam Speaker, what happened is that the government in its uh, knee-jerk uh, you know, responses decided that we will train the teachers that will be teaching CBC. And the teachers that were taken for this training, which was just basically you know, in service training, uh, for, for like a week or two weeks or three weeks was generally for the teachers that were teaching lower primary schools. And Madam Speaker, what if the research shows that those teachers that were teaching lower primary schools are mostly the mature ladies, lady teachers, female teachers in our rural areas. And when they were taken for training, when they came back, they refused to teach that system and passed it on to the younger generation and told them it is you who can do this training. Unfortunately, that training actually went to waste. And so you find